Okay, welcome to Face to Face. And today we're going to do, we're going to go to West Virginia. We're going to call about uh, coal mining, top removal. I'm with David. Thank you very much for for the show. Thank you, David. For coming. And um, so you do filmmaking, you do documentary. Yes. And uh, um, we wanted to have you to discuss uh, the proposal from Trump to uh, go back to coal. And, and you have 20 years of experience or 15 years of experience on, on coal and mining and the consequences on health yeah. in West Virginia. So take it from there. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I, I, I got involved in, um, in looking at coal and mm -hmm. coal mining mm -hmm. um, some years ago, about 15 years ago. In mm -hmm. fact, I, mm -hmm. I met a gentleman who was a scientist in, in Kentucky and he was doing a study uh, looking at mountaintop removal coal mining sites. And I didn't know what that is. And it turns out that that coal companies now in Appalachia, and they've been doing this since the mid 80s, but on, on an escalating scale. On a bigger uh, scale. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, they just cut off the tops of the mountains. They explode um, it. They explode them. Yeah. And um, it's, it's, it's horrible. And they do this in order to get at the upper seams of coal that mm -hmm. are very difficult to mine mm -hmm. any other way. Mm -hmm. um, and they then take all of this overburden, they call it, which is all of the rocks and the dirt from the explosion, and push it over with bulldozers, yeah. and it just buries the streams. And these are like the headwater streams with beautiful filtered water wow. that end up getting into the rivers and aquifers for 20 million people. Um, it's outstanding. And, and, and that's the pollution, I imagine, in the air of the explosion. The it's air is horrific. What happens is the rocks, you know, the rocks have heavy metals in them. Yeah. You know, in nature, those heavy metals are bound in the rocks mm -hmm. so that we're not drinking them, Doing eating and, them, and, and breathing, breathing them. them. Yeah. Uh, but when you blow off the top of a mountain in mm -hmm. order to get mm -hmm. at the coal, that's mm -hmm. all being released into yeah. the air and the water. Yeah, yeah. I remember when, when the, in, in Iceland, the Vulcan mm -hmm. erupted. It was a disaster for, for many, 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 many weeks. That's I mean, right. And it, it's, uh, you have glass. And with the heat, it was, uh, it was uh, the plane was not able to, to, to fly and everything. So, um, what is the story now of, of the coal and the mining and then the proposal was not going to go anywhere because uh, coal is it's, it's out and, and anyway. Yeah, I mean, what, what happened initially is that through kind of 2005 and into the Obama administration, mm -hmm. um, local activists in West Virginia and Kentucky pre mm -hmm. predominantly mm -hmm. um, fought a terrific campaign mm -hmm. to try and halt or if not roll back the scale of mountaintop removal mm -hmm. mining in particular. Mm -hmm. um, and by and large, they weren't against underground mining. They mm -hmm. were really against this mountaintop removal yeah. mining because mm -hmm. it's so destructive. Mm -hmm. And in the Obama administration, they made a lot of headway. Mm -hmm. uh, what Obama had done was he sort of slowed down the permitting process uh, because the coal companies were getting away with permits Mildo. without having to yeah. do anything, yeah. right? Um, and uh, using a regulation within the Clean Water Act, mm -hmm. he sort of put in place this this stream protection rule mm -hmm. um, to prevent that that burying of streams. And it was still going on, but it was going on at a, at a lesser they, scale, and there was progress gradually being made. Yeah. Um, and many of these environmentalists, the local environmentalists, were recognized internationally for their work, for, the for what they were doing, yeah. and mm -hmm. for their fight. Mm -hmm. uh, particularly Maria Gano, who's the heroine of of, of Burning the Future, oh, my wow. film about yeah. coal mining. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what's gone on now is that the administration has announced a removal of that stream protection rule. Um, and I think that's in place already. And the permitting process is ratcheting up. And there are more and more trucks coming down ready to move rocks for permitted mines. Maria actually texted me today and said, they just want to kill all of us, both sides, both sides, she says. And by that, she means there are environmentalists like her who are trying to protect their mountains, their way of life, and their health. And there are coal miners who want jobs. But mountain tarp removal mining doesn't protect coal mining jobs at all. Yeah. Very few people yeah. actually work. Uh -huh. uh, and the real thing that's taking away jobs in Appalachia in the coal mining regions is the, the mechanization yeah. of the industry, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? Of so course. it takes many, many fewer miners yeah to work on a ton of coal today. No, no, but even the, the, the uh, production and consumption of coal in the U.S. Yeah. has been done to, to, to not nothing, but uh, I mean, it has been replaced by other means of uh, energy. So uh, to, to 
to turn to do a U turn on that, it, it's absolutely. It's insane. It's insane. It, it's not. It, it's not. It's, it's not going to happen. It's, it it it's lines not. the pockets yeah. of coal barons, yeah. and that's really what it yeah. is for. But it's more like a political show, or it's. it's, it's they really think they're going to go back to coal and and. Uh, I think it's a political show. I yeah. mean, he's. You know, I'm. Uh, Mr. Trump mm -hmm. made promises of jobs mm -hmm. in Appalachia. Mm -hmm. uh, he made promises of bringing coal back, and mm -hmm. that that was going to mean jobs. And I think that. I think the production will increase, actually. Um, as I said, mountain tarp removal mining right now is on an upsurge. Yeah. People down there can see it happening before their very eyes. Uh -huh. um, but that's not really bringing back jobs yeah. at all. Because yeah. you know, for every additional ton of coal that's being mined, that doesn't mean it's that there's like another it's, job Yeah, It's anymore. a part-time job for... It, it's a part-time, and yeah. now it's almost always non-union. Mm -hmm. The safety regulations are horrible. Absolutely. There was another miner killed just two days ago mm -hmm. in West Virginia. Mm -hmm. So. You know, when you look at it, I, I think they do want to mine mm -hmm. every bit of coal that's there because mm -hmm. it's worth something. Mm -hmm. And the market depends on, well, what's the price of natural gas? Mm -hmm. What's the price of oil? Mm -hmm. You know, these things fluctuate. And when those prices go up, which yeah. they have, coal becomes, you know, market viable for, for the producers. So there's always that risk of going back and pulling out as much but of it as But it's more a legislation can. issue because, the, I mean, the, if, if they had to pay the cost of producing that coal, that would be much, much expensive than, than oil or anything else. But mountain removal mining is it's cheap, cheap yeah. if you're not paying for all of the externalized costs. Exactly. The health of the people in the area, mm -hmm. right? And, the destruction and, and, of the mountains. And, and, to, and for the clean air and the so on and so forth. The clean air and yeah. the water, right? Yeah. All those costs are just externalized. Yeah. Yeah. And it's every, everybody else is paying the... Yeah, and we are. Bill. We yeah. all are. Mm -hmm. We're all paying for yeah. it. So do you, um, you do other, you are working in other uh, production? You, um, I do, am. Do you want to add something to the cold uh, story to people can contact? Yeah, can, can absolutely. Can reach out to or can help to organize? Uh, it, yeah, the most important thing I want to say really is that, you know, coal is predominantly used for electricity generation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We are all involved in this. Yeah. Right? We turn on our lights uh, and, and there's coal being burned somewhere and there's a mountain being blown up somewhere. And mm -hmm. we need to really think about the, the whole chain, the whole life chain of our energy mm -hmm. production. Mm -hmm. And know that what's going on in Appalachia, you know, we see this thing that's about, you know, people who, you know, miners with jobs versus environmentalists. That's not really what it is. We need to protect a way of life in mm -hmm. Appalachia. We need mm -hmm. to protect the mountains. We need to protect the Americans who live there. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are many organizations that, um, that need money, that need volunteers, that need people in the arts, that need you know, a a people who want to tell stories in any way, shape, or form um, to sort of continue to bring this awareness and fight these changes that are going on in Washington right now. Um, and I'd like to give a shout out to Maria Gano, certainly. Okay. Um, and she and a number of other activists have started a new organization called mm -hmm. Mother Jones Community Foundation. Okay. Um, also the Ohio, Val the Ohio Valley Environmental Coalition, mm -hmm. uh, Kentuckians for the Commonwealth, um, Coal River Mountain Watch. There are a number of organizations Great. all throughout there who have been doing Impressive. tremendous, tremendous work for, okay. for decades now, but they always need financial support because mm -hmm. it's a very tough battle to mm -hmm. fight. Mm -hmm. So we will put the, the, the address of the website and then, and then so people can reach Terrific. out to, um, to, the, uh, to the organization and, 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 and be involved and help to... That's uh, terrific. To, uh, and Burning to, the Future, if you want to learn more about, uh, uh, about the topic, should watch my film, Burning the Future. It's on iTunes. It's on Vimeo. Vimeo is sort of the easiest place to, to stream to it yeah. right now. Um, but it is also on iTunes. Okay. And uh, if you're involved with the university, uh, it's streaming on most universities' library yeah. platforms as well. Mm -hmm. And so, other what, projects. What, other project. It's a lot going on. <laughs> the life of a documentary yeah, were, filmmaker. That's what you're uh, telling me. Yeah. Um, so I have a film that's out now uh, called Finding Babel, mm -hmm. and it's having its digital release in a few weeks. Mm -hmm. It's a film about a Russian Jewish writer named Isaac Babel from the 1920s and 1930s, who was a subversive writer. Uh, he he was in his early years a communist supporter, and he went off as essentially one of the first embedded journalists 
riding with the Red Cavalry in 1920, fighting mm -hmm, a war mm -hmm. against this, uh, between the Soviets and the Poles. Mm -hmm. um, and he journaled that, uh, that war in a very, very interesting way and wrote a series of short stories about it. Uh, Babel is also known for a series of short stories about the Jewish mafia yeah. in Odessa uh -huh. called the Odessa Tales, which is a very funny mm -hmm. series of, of short stories. Um, but his work was subversive, and ultimately in 1939 he was pulled out and he was executed in 1940. Um, uh, the film has Liev Schreiber uh, as the voice of Babel. We bring Babel's literature in and work it in sort of very lyrically into the historical context of what it is that we're covering. Uh, and the film's structured around the journey of Babel's grandson, uh -huh. who is Russian, but uh -huh. he, he's American. He lives here now. He mm -hmm. moved here in his 30s, mm -hmm. and he travels through the lands of Ukraine uh, and Russia in search of understanding his grandfather. Better. And that's coming out now? Yeah, it was or? out in theaters actually last year, oh, okay. uh, but it's coming out digitally, digitally. digitally in a few weeks. It's first going to be on Vimeo. Okay. Uh, uh, you can go to, to findingbobble.com to find out more about okay. it and see the trailer and okay, whatnot. Great. Um, and uh, yeah, and then it's going to be out on another platform shortly after. And then you're going to come back and then we're going to do a new a, another about That'd be perfect. I, I wrote the, the, and then the newest? Yeah. So that you, we, have, we have time no, still? No, <laughs> but go for it. So, the, so the, the newest film, which is called, for the moment, Running for Justice, we might change the name for it now, uh -huh. uh, is, it started out about the, um, the race for Brooklyn District Attorney, mm -hmm. uh, which I found to be a very compelling race because it was bringing forth all kinds of national issues on criminal justice reform, uh, police brutality, um, immigrant issues, uh, etc. Uh, because that's where we are. That's the moment that we're in mm -hmm. right now. And mm -hmm. certainly in Brooklyn, everything that goes on nationally also goes on in Brooklyn. Yeah. So in this race, I was following a particular candidate named Mark Fleedner, mm -hmm. And um, I find him a very compelling and interesting person uh, a as a subject of a film mm -hmm. and also as a candidate. Mm -hmm. And uh, it turned out that he didn't win the primary, the Democratic primary. That was something to be expected yeah. because you know, the, no surprise. It's no surprise <laughs> because the, the party likes who the party likes and they, they don't want change so yeah, yeah. much. Mm -hmm. um, but it's still a very compelling story because he really elevated the conversation and much of his support came from Twitter users, social media users, Black Lives Matter, uh, the Bernie Revolution, our revolution people. Mm -hmm. um, so it was really very much a grassroots campaign mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. little money and, mm -hmm. and he did terrifically mm -hmm. given that framework. Mm -hmm. Well, now everything's changed. Because, as you know, uh, this, these Weinstein allegations came out about Harvey, Harvey Weinstein yeah. two mm -hmm. weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, and it turns out that there are um, signs that the Manhattan District Attorney, Cy Vance, um, he look, chose not to prosecute. Look, look somewhere else. He may have looked somewhere else. It looks that way, right? Mm -hmm. uh, both for Weinstein and for Trump Jr. Mm -hmm. and Ivanka mm -hmm. Trump. Mm -hmm. And there's mm -hmm. a number of other yep. issues. And uh, Mr. Vance is running unopposed. No one ran against him in the Democratic primary in September, and nobody's running against him in the general election in November. So Mark is sitting in an event two weeks ago. We thought we were done filming already because the Brooklyn DA race was yeah, basically was over. Close, yeah. And uh, his Twitter feed starts beeping, vibrating, blowing yeah. up, yeah. you know? Uh, and it turns out that on social media, a number of a, a significant number of people were tweeting angrily because of the Cy Vance thing uh, that people in Manhattan should write in Mark Fleedner Do, on their on, ballot on, on November on November seventh, yeah. and vote him in, even though Cy Vance is running is running technically unopposed. Um, and now, once again, Black Lives Matter is behind him, and, and, and Curtis Sliwa from the Guardian Angels is behind him, and I mean, dead fellows who you so wouldn't expect. So he might expect. Going to be elected without being in the ballot. He may be elected without actually being on the ballot. Wow. And, there's a, and, and it, it, what's so fascinating to me is that this is democracy as, as, actually yeah, in this action. Is, this is less, as direct as you can get. I yeah. mean, this is really very interesting issue. Yeah. So we're going to have to see what's happening in November, and then we um, I'll be back. That we'll be back, <laughs> and then we will have the whole story. Yeah. Thank you very much for coming to the show. Thank you so much. Uh, My um, pleasure. And uh, hope to see you very soon. Yeah. So that was uh, a face-to-face, -face and you can keep watching your news on Presenza.com, and uh, hope to see you very soon. Thank you.